2017 has really been the year underlining the relationship between natural catastrophes and environment on one side and migration and conflicts on, on the other side. We had the horrible cyclones in the Caribbean as well as in the United States. We have seen the drought in Somalia, landslides in Sierra Leone and great flooding in Bangladesh and India. So many people have been suffering from the enormous impact of natural catastrophes. That's why we need to make the link between what we are doing in the International Organization for Migration and what we are doing in UN Environment. UN Environment just one year ago joined the UN Global Migration Group. We are very encouraged by the open process you have put in place. The inclusion of environment and climate issues in the broad thinking around migration and conflicts. And the preparations for the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration which I hope we will be able to finalize in 2018. This work highlights the role of the environment in either creating stable and prosperous societies or driving migration and displacement. Just as it demonstrates the potential impact on the environment of failing to adapt to climate change or reduce the risk of disaster in the first place. Take the quarter of a million people in the Caribbean affected by the hurricanes Irma and Maria, which was so devastating this year. In Puerto Rico alone, nearly 80,000 people were evac evacuated. Half the power grid remains offline. And for vulnerable people like Georgia Lopez Ortiz in Puerto Rico, that means being a virtual prisoner. It's impossible for her to cook and too dangerous to go outside after dark. Her only lifeline is a rope passed through security bars to aid groups delivering food and water. So the media headlines have gone, but the problems have not. These are the kind of far-reaching consequences we need to remember when taking decisions on land use, on energy, on infrastructure, and in so many other areas. Decisions that we are locked into for decades, what we decide to do in 2017, have implications for maybe 50 years to come. And that have the potential to create either virtuous or vicious cycles. That's why it's so important that the work of the Global Compact should be linked to the work to tackle climate change, to protect the biodiversity, to fight poverty, health destruction, to fight for equality, security and decent work. I very much hope this will be reflected in your discussions today and I really look forward to hearing the outcome. Let's work together to make the link between environment and migration so that we can serve the planet and its people.